okay hi i'm dr anjeev ratake i am a practicing sexologist and a psychiatrist i have my clinic here in kalyani nagar in pune okay as far as changes are concerned what i'll do is i'll leave aside the neurological or more obvious aspects of concern which are let's say memory loss dementia parkinson's and all and all of that and i'll specifically refer to more as about mental health and sexual interest concern as i am more uh, of an expert in that field now as far as mental health is concerned obviously there are two peaks as far as mental health problems are concerned which is one the adolescence and then the in the later stages of life so anxiety depression the prevalence of it rises around that area and obviously once that happens your confidence as a person also takes a blow along with that are physiological changes in some hormones so to name a few one of the primary hormones which is responsible for our sexual activity our sexual desire sexual uh, erections in men men is testosterone so the testosterone levels start taking a dip as we approach the later phases in our life but testosterone also controls your mood and as we already spoke about depression anxiety and how as you are approaching let's say the later stages and death you are low on confidence you are more vulnerable and that's also why the sexual aspect of the life also takes a little bit of a blow so if testosterone dips naturally you're going to see lesser erections okay less frequency or uh, sorry lesser sexual desires and libido as far as women are concerned okay once women hit menopause the sexual desire as it is starts diminishing as compared to their male counterparts but along with that especially after menopause the ovarian hormones which are estrogen and progesterone they also start leveling off and also hormones like prolactin which are more in women they start to increase and there is also a trace of testosterone which is also responsible for the female sexual cycle that also diminishes so if we compare age wise and how biologically it differs is the women start experiencing these changes earlier than their male counterparts okay the commonest sex related disorder as far as males are concerned is erectile dysfunction okay and premature ejaculation that varies across the age group but generally as the age approaches uh, we approach towards or the elder life erectile dysfunction is a commonest problem one because of the biological effect of the diminished testosterone levels okay the second is a more psychological in origin because of the unavailability of a sexual partner like i said men and women their bodies differ and as women approach menopause the libido and the sex drive starts diminishing while their male counterparts might be having that much of a libido so if you're not having enough sex then also at a biological level because of a negative feedback loop your testosterone levels is further dipping okay so erectile dysfunction is one of the commonest problems and because of that your confidence goes further down and then you start having mood disorders like depression anxiety regarding such situation premature ejaculation again it's a, it's an absolutely i consider it to be a 100% uh, psychological uh, problem because it just depends on your state of mind if you are having a comfortable sex life with your partner with a trusted partner you are much more relaxed and that's how it reflects on your sexual performance as well as far as women are concerned on the other side the problems are more in terms of when you not having enough sex or when you are approaching menopause one of the commonest problem is vaginismus which is a painful sexual experience or we can also call it dyspareunia in medical parlance which happens because one the estrogen progesterone levels are dipping and because couples start for giving more less and less time to foreplay which is inherently required for women to get that kind of sexual arousal and even if people have that kind of understanding most people do not know the importance of foreplay even during their earlier adult lives and that part is missed and creating sexual experience a much more aversive experience for women as we go ahead and ahead as they grow older see 
kept asking me if the adults in the house are open to bringing their parents to the clinic. I think that never happens because the children or the older adults and the elderly don't discuss about these problems unless it becomes an inappropriate behavior as far as bipolar disorder or something of that sort is concerned. Also in dementia. Okay, but that aside, it's up to the elderly gentlemen and women itself that they have to take on the onus, okay, and not feel that even if we are getting older, we don't deserve sex or it's something that is done and dusted and that was the area that are bygones that the era we should have done and now we can't do anything about it. No, as long as you have the sexual desire, you can do it. And if you have a partner who's willing, you must be able to do it. There are many times, there are other factors which are associated with women. Like I mentioned earlier about dyspareunia and vaginismus pain. There are other factors which women think culturally in our societies that now that I'm old enough, I don't think having sex is appropriate for me. And that is absolutely wrong. As long as you're biologically feeling, age is just a number and there's no number where you should stop having sex. So it's, it's up to the people and the elderly themselves to come and talk openly about sex. I don't think it has got to do with the communication that happens with their children. See, as far as our society is concerned, and I'm referring only to the Indian context, is culturally itself, right since childhood, we don't speak a lot about sex. We don't speak a lot about things like masturbation, which are absolutely healthy activities and which are natural activities. And what happens is, because we don't talk enough about these things, we end up growing up as repressed adults, confused adults regarding masturbation and adults, and because of that, because of the confusion of a natural ex instinct which is not expressed, we end up having a lot of mental health disorders like anxiety and depression, including a lot of physical complaints which are unexplained by a lot of tests which are done by a lot of people. So that is one common accompaniment across ages, but especially if you carry that belief that masturbation is harmful, I'm doing something wrong, or sex after a certain age is wrong, then you're going to again keep suppressing those natural instincts and they're going to take a toll on your body. So it definitely has a tight correlation. As far as the specification regarding age is concerned, I wouldn't think that is, there is a lot of difference. The only difference is, yes, like I said, it's a biological difference as far as the ages is concerned between partners. Because men tend to have that kind of a sexual desire until later stages in their life, as opposed to their partners, they end up feeling uh, the need to be more pronounced than their female counterparts. However, I see these days more and more elderly coming and openly discussing these aspects involving their partners. But there's a lot of work still to be done as far as the women are concerned. Women are still not coming and but not talking, but the men definitely do. See, I'll tell you all. Happy aging depends on. I, I quoted uh, Socrates there. There are a lot of authors who have written about this. The central point that they say is if you have lived the life well, then you can die well. So if I'm not thinking about how I end up in my old life and I'm living my life to the fullest with gathering all the experiences that I want to whether it's relationship, whether it's my professional pursuits, whether it's travel, everything that I want to do and not being anxious during my foundational and my adult years, then I have a life to look back upon where I don't have a lot of regrets. And then I can also embrace the death that, that is approaching me very peacefully.